brushes. We have our large flat brush, a small flat brush, and maybe a detail brush. If you don't have this one, not a problem. We can always make nice thin lines with our flat brush. All three of our brushes are gonna go in our water so the bristles can get a little bit moist. Um, it always works better to spread paint with a wet brush. Uh, you should also have some paper towels or a rag handy to wipe your brushes off with, your canvas obviously, and a plate or some sort of palette. So we're gonna get our paints going for today. We're gonna have all three primary colors, red, yellow, blue, and then black and white. Um, so I do like to start with about a silver dollar size of the primary colors. Um, you can always go get more. It's harder to shove the paint back in the tube if you don't use it. So I always err on the side of less and grab some more. So if you guys want to start loading up your palette, you can go for it. So we've got red, blue, yellow. And then on the other side, I'm going to put some white. And last but not least, black. All right. So we're going to put our palette to the side here. And then if you want to put your um, speaker back on, we're going to kind of take a look at this painting and ask some questions. And we're going to look before we do this painting because it is a perspective. Painting, so it does take a little bit of a thought process to make sure the perspective works. Okay. So one thing about perspective is you have to follow the diagonal line to have that distance view happening. So we're actually going to give ourselves this guideline very first thing, doing our um, sketching out before we do any paint. And then if you notice the light posts here in the middle, they are long in the foreground and they get shorter as you go back. However, look, all of the lights are on the same plane. So making sure that these lines are straight up and down, what's really easy to do is start angling your light post and go mm -hmm. diagonal, but you know, avoid that as best you can and go straight up and down. And they get shorter as they get towards the back end of the path. And then again, same thing here, the lights are on the same line and they get a little smaller as you go into the distance. So, those two things are really key to keep the perspective mm -hmm. the same. And the background is really abstract, very brush strokey, very um, uh, free flowing. So um, one of the things I'll say as we get closer is less is more. Less brush strokes means more color. So you okay. see green, you see yellow, you see some white, you see all sorts of colors in here. So we're gonna try to stop ourselves from over brushing when we get to this point so we can have a lot of color variation. Okay, so okay. just to draw our line, we're going to use our small flat brush. And I'm going to dab that excess water off on my paper towel just so we don't get any drips. Paper towel, please. Yeah, I'll get it. Quickly. Oh, do you guys need me to hang on a sec? I can wait. She's getting it. Get okay. to. Good girl. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Get your small flat brush wherever that here it is okay dip it in the water and then there yeah ready perfect okay so we're gonna take a peek at this line and we're gonna draw this for starters so it sort of starts here at this bottom corner maybe about an inch above the bottom right corner and it angles up to about that one third mark on the opposite side so we're going to try to gauge that line and create mm -hmm. two um, sides of our canvas. And I'm going to use blue because the, the sky has a blue background and then the bottom also has some blue. So this way the line will blend nicely. So bottom right, we're going to go about an inch up from the bottom corner and then eyeball it first so you can kind of guide where you're going. We're going to head this direction, okay? and. Try to go from point A to point B. Don't do choppy lines because then the line will get too thick. So deep breath in, here we go. Kind of like that. So we've got a division now of our canvas. Top half and bottom half. How do we feel about that? Yeah, that's good. Great. Ah, uh, let's see, here we go. What one was this? Oh, apron, thank you. Okay, how's this? 
Amazing. Yep, that's it. Good job. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. <Yeah. then. laughs> Got that's it. The hardest part. <laughs> <laughs> I know. The, the lines always freak me out because It'll I'm get not you. just line drawer. <laughs> All good. Okay, so let's attack the top half of this painting first. Uh, we're going to do X shapes with our brush and we're going to double dip our brush. So we're going to put one side of our, so we switched to our big flat brushes. We can cover some more square footage. We're going to put one side of the big flat brush in blue and then we're going to spin the brush to the other side and put it in white. So we have two colors, blue and then white. The better build than I do anyway. Blue and white. Yes, okay, so my flapper says blue on one side and white on the other. Blue and white. Let's get the white. Shake, shake, shake. And once you get that loaded, we're just going to make those X shapes. And let's start on the left-hand side and work our way towards the right. So when you have a double-loaded brush, it's going to blend the colors as you paint. Kind of like so. So look, load the brush one side this, one side that, and just X, X, X. Yeah, so um, as you start Xing, you can start to see immediately the more brush strokes you do, the more blendy to light blue you get. But we definitely want to keep that variation. So maybe the next time you load your brush, maybe just do blue and just kind of play with the colors. Also at this time, if you'd like to add the color around the edges of your canvas, do that as well as we work our way around. Um, that is not a, a must do by any means, but if you prefer the edges being covered, now's the time you can start adding that in. Oops. There we go. So throughout this entire painting, we definitely want to see those brush strokes. So nice and, um, choppy and free-flowing and overlapping. And we're going to keep following that diagonal line as we work towards the right. Um, keep it up in this area. Okay. Not right over here. No. We're working toward the red. The red is going to come in here. So see how she's covering it? Here's Cover. a close-up view. You can see dark see blue, you can see white, you can yeah. see light blue and mixing. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. I should be saying that about very nice. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know we're kind of getting globby with the paint, but try to keep a thinner Oof. coat of paint so it'll dry a lot faster because we're going to put our yellows and oranges on top of this. We want it to move quickly and we don't have to sit here till tomorrow. What happened to all the rest of the participants? Um, this was the only sign-ups for today. I've been teaching small classes. I think Mondays and Wednesdays are, are interesting days for something like this, you know, because the studio is usually very busy on the weekends and, you know, people looking for an activity, so. Um, but I used to teach at Sipping and Painting Hampton. I taught there for about three years and then uh, I moved up north, and it just wasn't as easy to get to. So it's nice to be able to still teach online during the corona. Yeah, this is nice. I really like it better than going to the studio. Oh, good. Well, maybe I mean, these, we'll, we'll keep some online classes if, you know, things I start getting so. up again and have it as an option. I just think it's so convenient not to have to drive and drink. <laughs> yeah, for sure. 
go have your wine and paint and then get in the car, you know? Yeah, now <laughs> like, you can stay home and have your wine. Exactly. I don't have to get in my car. Oh, look, she's going all the way to the edge. I was wrong. Yeah, so the colors that we're going to do next, um, it's nice to layer the complements. So because we're going to do oranges and blues, the orange is going to pop out on top of the blue. And okay. green is a buddy with blue, so it'll look nice when we get there as well. So we're just going to – I kind of like to start with not a blank canvas when we start adding in some extra stuff. So I think I'm pretty good at this rate up on the top. But we can hang out here till you guys are ready. I'm going to put mine on mute, and you just holler at me when you're ready to move on to the next thing. Sounds good. Okay. I did notice you got darker as you went toward the um, front of the painting. I mean, you know, perspectively speaking. Yeah. So is that what you bit. want me to do? Uh, you sure can. I think the greens will... Uh, blend a little bit better, but this one definitely has more oranges at the end, my example, versus the one that's on the screen. So either way, the blue and the orange background will be a nice contrast. You need more paint. That's what's wrong. Okay, thanks. Oh, that. You need more paint on here. And I'd like you to do the white also. Yeah. Um, here. There you go. I eventually do that. Okay. Good job. Okay, you know you're supposed to be doing X's, right? I mean, that works. I, I kind of like that. I'm yeah, gonna, yeah, I'm I like low. it. I like it. Yours always comes out good. That come out good. Yeah, I, I know it will. It's abstract. No, it's impressionistic, I think. But I get you. Yours are usually abstract. Is this going to be one of your abstracts? Probably. Okay. Now, Kitty, don't give me any trouble. <laughs> <laughs> wants to interfere he just doesn't quite know how oh, he's gonna beg for food that's what oh I like that looks different mm, different is good though maybe I'm gonna do some of this this time a little bit different yeah. <laughs> Well, that's that. Don't you want to cover all the canvas? Eventually, but I'm letting it dry. All right. Okay, Before I mess it all up. Yeah. my white. Oh no, baby. He still, he's got some food. So he's good. Good boy. Mr. Pesty. I can't believe we get a private class. This is awesome. Oh, yeah. I showed her your painting. She really liked that ocean one. Oh, the beachy? The one that Tatiana liked. <laughs> How are we doing with the blues, ladies? We're getting there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Can you All see? All right. Yeah, that looks great. Okay. And let's nice show... Job. 
prefer yours because I, Hillary oh, always that's... does a little different style. I like the way it Ooh, I love all that movement. I think that's great. And then that'll be plenty of space to layer the colors on top. So I think you're at a great spot. Okay, good. Yeah. Good. So now we're going to fill in this bottom portion. This is going to be either a road or a river. It kind of depends on what you're into. Um, so we're going to use our big flat brush again for this. So really wash it in your cup, and then I want you to take your paper towel and test the brush, because we're going to use yellow and white. And if your water is still blue, that means you need to wash your brush some more. So I'm going to dump out my water real fast. <laughs> yeah. Just might need to give it a good swirl. Everybody ready? Not quite. Well, okay. I'm a... We'll wait for it. <laughs> Mine's always abstract. <laughs> That's fun. Yep. This is before the funnest thing that we've ever done since COVID. Oh, that's so great. I'm so excited that you guys are coming back. <laughs> yeah, we love the classes. This has been a great relief from the dreariness of everything canceled. <laughs> yeah, creativity is definitely a great outlet during this time. I kept saying I was, everybody said, you need to start painting again. And I was like, <laughs> I'm just not motivated. I need yeah. some motivation. And then when these classes came up, I thought, oh, what the heck, let's dive in and do some of these online. Yeah, classes. for sure. And I know my mom's yeah. always begging me to keep painting. So. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. So we've got a clean flat brush. We're oh, going to do the same this, technique. This one is not clean. I don't know okay. how I Clean enough. We're gonna do the double dip again, but this time we're gonna go into the yellow and then flip and go into the white. So we've got yellow and white on our brush now. And this is a first try at ignoring the okay. diagonal no. line and going straight back and forth, okay? So this is gonna test our brains a little bit because what's gonna, what we're gonna wanna do is this way, follow the diagonal but we want to go flat, flat, and we want to just scribble in. Scribble in. Scribble in your yellow and white. But we want to okay. go straight across, not like this. Right now. Straight across. Blue. So let's start with a clean plate, okay? Here's yellow. Hmm. What happened? This one's not open. Hang on. Yellow. And white. And you just want to butt up to that line as close as you can because we're going to add in some more colors and blend this up. Um, so just get as close to that diagonal line as you can. But again, straight across, not on the diagonal. Yes. I'm going to put some white on here. Don't take it off. Just Put it on your canvas. Yes, yeah, I know. Okay. I'm trying to thin it out. But All right. right. Well, something. I know yellow's a little tough to see on my screen, but hopefully you guys are feeling okay. Yeah. Okay. I think I need more white. Uh, hold on to these things. I know these little these uh, easels go flying. Yeah, sometimes I have a better go at it if I hold it. <laughs> yeah, we bought these little easels because the big easels we couldn't see too well. The the oh, screen. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So we got these little easels, and they just fly all over the place. They're not heavy yeah. like the big ones. Even this wooden one I have is pretty mobile. <laughs> Can't move yeah. Neat. Nice. Cool. So once we're done with that, we need to uh, let this dry so we can add colors on top. So we're going to take a little bit of a break just so this can spend some time drying. And you can always fan it around to speed up the drying process. But um, what we'll, we will know that it's dry when it's no longer shiny. So you can take a look at an angle or underneath your lights in the house. You can definitely see if it's shiny, that means it's still wet. So we are happy to uh, hang tight and let that dry properly so we can really get the layered colors and we won't have a bunch of mixing and have it be muddy when we get to the next part. So let's just be patient and let it dry once you've got that yellow block in. I'm going to go on mute. I'm going to step out. I'm going to refill my coffee, but um, we'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, guys? All right. Neat. Sick. So I'm going to work on this top portion again. Um, so if you check this example, we've got blue in our furthest distance, and then we go into some greens, and then we go into these really beautiful oranges and yellows. Nice. So same brush stroke, right? So we're gonna do X's yeah. or dots or something abstract here. And we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna mix up our green. So what two colors do we need for green? Yellow and blue. Perfect, and we're also gonna add some white so we have a little bit of a pastel green. And notice it's just a little C shape here in the middle. You've got a little green over here that trickles across, but it doesn't take up a bunch of space. So I am actually going to get a small plate so I can make my green. We'll just do it on here. So let's do some blue. And yellow. And some white. This is called a chopstick, not a brush. <laughs> So I'm going to use the big flat brush again, so we're going to wash off our yellow and dab off the water on our paper towel so we don't have any drips. And then we're just going to do a little science experiment. We're going to pick up some blue, add some yellow, start mixing it together, and then add in some white when we feel like we have a green that we like to make it a little bit more pastel. <clears throat> If your green is too dark like this, that means we can add some more yellow to make it a little bit lighter, or vice versa. If it's a little bit too bright or yellow green, just add some blue back. And it doesn't have to be a perfectly mixed batch because everything in this painting is lots of colors, lots of layers, lots of movement. It's definitely appropriate to have um, different shades of green coming through. Okay, cool. we're there. Good. So I'm going to kind of skip this blue section up here in the corner. And I'm going to come down uh, about a third of the way in and start layering my green on top of my blue. And we're going to start bringing that down and across. We want to envision this as kind of like trees in the distance, uh, maybe some shrubs. If you need to stop and mix some more green again, that works too. And if your blue is a little dark in the background, it's not a bad thing to maybe do a little bit of a lighter green just so it stands out a little bit on your darker background. And again, we're coming all the way down to that line. And let me just get this a little closer for you so you can take a peek. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's nice to have the blue coming through as well, just to add a little bit of depth to our scenery mm -hmm. here. <clears throat> okay. And I'm going to stop this a little early because I don't want us to overdo it, right? And we still have lots of space left for our orange. So let's go ahead and wash our brush.
And then if you've got space on your plate, maybe you just add another blob of red because we're gonna mix orange up now for the next portion. Same thing, grab a little bit of red, grab a little bit of yellow, ketchup and mustard. And then you can dab in some white to lighten it if you need. Oh, or yeah. if you like the really saturated orange, you can definitely go for that as well. We will do a, another layer. We're going to do some orange first, and then we'll do like a pure red and some pure yellow to add a little bit of variety. So our first pass is going to be orange. And this is going to layer right up against your green. And you're going to take that all the way to the right edge of your canvas. We're going to layer over the blue. Even though we are covering up the blue, the fact that we're layering orange on top of blue will help that orange stand out. How's that? Maybe a bit more. It's a fun one to mix because there's so many different shades because it can be peachy, it can be pink if it's too much white. So it's a, yeah. it definitely comes out different every time. It does the best. Yeah, you can use that and just put it right here. Look. Yeah. And if at any time you think your brush is getting too clumpy or thick, it's not making the brush strokes that you like, just stop and give it a wash and start over. Um, this big flat brush holds a lot of paint, so sometimes it gets a little too full, and then your X's maybe aren't looking the way that you're uh, liking them to or used to them looking, so always a stop and wash is a fine thing to do. Whoa, Mama. Uh oh, whoops! We're kind of boiling some pasta in the background now. <laughs> got a lot going on. So I gotta watch out for stuff for her. <laughs> I forgot about it. Well, Great. good you remembered. Got some gnocchi. <laughs> <laughs> to the Joe's gnocchi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the pan is hot. Oh my god. Yeah, we sure love that to the Joes. <laughs> All right. Give us more of that. There. Okay. Oh. This is that. So okay. some of that again. The gnocchi is saved. Thank you. Oh, that looks like it. Now I need. Uh, so we're going all the way to the edge. Yeah. Uh, so we've got blue, green, and orange. Oh yeah, I like that. Cool. Green. Cool. I have green. Okay. Let's okay. right. have yellow. And don't mix it. Not yet. No, not ever. We're going to pick it up on our papers and mix it. We want some strokes to show. Gosh. We'll have to mob that in this. Easily. Let's just make it kind of neat out over there. Now I need to make it. Anyhow. Done. Do that again. Oh, I guess I'll use my beans. Yeah. That sounds pretty good. Some of each color. Okay. 
Sardas. So moving now. You guys let me know when you're ready for the next thing. Okay. Well, I need some more of that green over here. Green? Yeah. I didn't do the top in the green. Yeah, that looks that looks good, Hill. I like it. That looks real good. All right. Can I drop in pretty? Yeah. Let's rinse. Let's rinse these out and get a little soap on it too. Do you have to make all of this tea? I love Emily and Stevia. <laughs> what? That's mine. What, yours? Yeah, I know mine's bottle. Oh. Okay. I guess it's ours. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know. Please. Please. You know I like the liquid, so I have to buy it. How's it going, you guys? Yeah. Going good, yeah. You still working on the top portion, or are you ready to go to our path? I think we're ready. She just needs to touch up the side. Okay. Here. Okay. Just do Let's the, take a look at it. The red. Here. Maybe a red. I'll take that over here. Yeah. Where are you going to leave the brushes? Ah. I'll take that. <laughs> nice. Okay. Hold the bottom right there. Okay. All right. That kind of matches looking good in the there. rest of your painting. Okay. Whoops. Why do I have red on a brush here? Ah. Uh, but I just. And what the heck's going on with the bell? I don't know. I'm drinking it. <laughs> Looks like you're spilling it too. I think it froze. <laughs> uh oh, I can still see you guys. Okay. 
Oh, it's okay, right? My my beer froze. I had a peach beer that I bought at Trader Joe's and I stuck it in the freezer. <laughs> and I forgot about it. And then it didn't explode. <laughs> it didn't explode, but it is frozen. But that's okay. That. All right. Okay. So I'll show you. Hers. Oh yeah, let's see. Ooh, very nice. Good job. <laughs> Great. And mine. Very good. <laughs> the lights. And the not. lamps are gonna look so nice on top of that, you guys. Good job. Good. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna let this dry because these little delicate black lines that are um lights, we are going to make sure it's very dry before we do any of that on top. So yeah. now we're gonna head to the bottom. We need to create fake reflections of the lamps. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of shade in the blue mm -hmm. inside our yellow background to create those highlights. So your brain likes things in odd numbers. So there are one, two, three, four, five kind of streaming lights down onto the path or water. So we're going to kind of mimic that and see here super short, a little bit longer, and they get a little bit uh, longer and wider as we go. So we're gonna switch. We're gonna switch to our small flat brush, just so we have a little bit more control. Small flat. So we're gonna switch to our smaller one and dab off the excess water on your paper towel, so we don't have any drips. Have you got some stuff on your paint now? I don't know, Kill. Gonna do some more than that stuff. On it. I don't know, but here's a small brush. And here is the blue. Oh, oh my gosh. See? I see what you mean. <laughs> now I see it. I think I'm painting with beer tonight. <laughs> it got into my plate. Okay. But I painted with wine before on accident. So. <laughs> All right, Hillary. Um, I guess I need one too. You need huh? your brush. Here. Make sure you dab it pretty well. Dab, dab, yeah. Okay, we're ready. Right. So we've got our small brush. We're gonna put the ends of the bristles in the blue. Don't put the whole thing in there, just the, the very ends of the bristles. And we're going to start on the short end here just so we can practice kind of piecing in our shadow. So I'm going to hold the brush a little bit flatter and towards the middle, and I'm gonna do this motion back and forth with my paint. So I'm going to start with the corner being blue, and then I'm going to skip and come on the other side with some blue. And again, try not to go on a diagonal. We want to go straight across. And these can be super abstract and um, not symmetrical. And if you'd like to bring in a little bit of a light blue, you can. You can bring in a little bit of a white on top. And we're kind of crisscrossing over the yellow, peeking through. How does that sound? Feel good yeah. about that? Okay, yeah. so this is our first one. Now I'm going to get some more blue. And we're going to create our second shadow and again this is very asymmetrical very abstract there's no science to it but we just want to make sure our lines are going straight across and again I'm going to bring in some white to kind of blend and bring that yellow across Good, so as you continue across the bottom portion, we're just gonna keep making, so we got two, so now we gotta space out three more, so this is gonna be maybe a little bit further over, one, two, three. And then we're also going to leave this section here if we wanna do a tree. So we're only going to about here with our uh, light reflections, okay. we're gonna put a tree right here. So. Don't go all the way to the edge. You don't have to worry about that. 
Okay, so I'm going to go mute while we work on that. You can watch as I um, fiddle with the blue, but holler if you need anything.
How are those reflections looking? Uh oh, I lost your video. Oh, there you go. Hi. <laughs> oh, turn your mute off. I can't hear you. I think they're okay. I think that's they're great. We can always go back and add some more highlights and lowlights once we get the posts in and you can see where the street lamps are hitting. Very good. Yes. So we can definitely go back and add some more highlights. It's not a problem. Okay. So in this example, we have a tree in the foreground. Would we like to do the tree? Yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. So we're gonna mix up a little bit of a purple. So red and blue. You're not gonna do the tree. Okay. I'm gonna use my big flat brush just because it's a little bit of a, a large space to cover, but use whichever brush you feel comfortable using. So red and blue make a really nice purple. And then I'm going to do a touch of yellow to help make it brown. All right. Yeah, I'm moving that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Our, our brownie, purpley brown color made up. Yep. Okay. So we're going to start all the way in the corner and we're going to take our tree trunk from the bottom and we're going to take it all the way up to the top. So I'm just going to give me a nice thick line here and then I'm going to come out like half of a Y shape on the top. And then I'm gonna come in and make the other half of the Y for the tree trunk and finish that line down. Oh. Now I've got a little tree. And if you'd like, you can add uh, some more branches uh, and just keep the letter Y as uh, a part of your branch making scheme here because that's going to help the tree look more tree-like, the letter Y. Okay. Hmm. How's that going? It's going. Okay. Just blending. Okay, don't blend too much. Remember what she said. I know. Blending is not the thing for this one. And we are going to come back with some black and white for the tree to add some highlight and low light. So this is just our first pass at tree shape. And then we will come back and add some more to it to kind of give it a little bit more depth. So don't worry too much about if it looks flat, if it's not the right shape. We're going to come back at the end 
after we do our lamp lights. Those so we're gonna um, use that same brown, purpley brown color. And I'm gonna switch to my small flat brush. And we're gonna just smudge along the line that we made at the very beginning to kind of blend. So I'm just going to smudge, smudge, get a little bit of a dark line coming color. across there. So then we are blending our top half and our bottom half. Um, sometimes like figure eights or the letter M or small X's tied together. So anything that um, helps no. you the create line. that line, we're just gonna use that dark brown along that separation line that we do, drew at the very beginning. All right. I'm just that. Okay. I have to go brush this. We're almost there, you guys. Yep. Oh, yeah. Um, so the next uh, something to get ready is we're going to do yellow and white again for our lamps. But I'm going to make a new small plate of yellow and white because both of my colors are pretty contaminated yeah, from fun. earlier. So um, feel free to get that ready whenever you want. Are you guys ready for the next part? Oh. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do our light posts and our trees. So we're going to use black and a very pale yellow. So first things first is we're going to draw in our light posts, and each light post is going to have two lamps on it. And in between each light post is we have a really skinny black lined tree. So let's get our small flat brush clean and ready to go. Here you go. Clean flat brush. And these are very loose lines. They're very thin. They're a little wiggly. So don't worry about them being perfectly straight. Just remember the thing that we talked about at the very beginning. Try to make your lines straight up and down and try not to follow the angle of our path or river walk. So keep them straight. They just stay like soldiers working up that diagonal line, but still up and down. Okay, so small flat brush. I'm just gonna dip very the very ends of my bristles into the black, just a very small amount of paint. And I'm gonna start at that darker line that we just did. I'm holding the brush about midway so it's a nice loose grip. And I'm gonna come up to about that third mark for the lamp post, but enough room so we have tree above the lamp post. So my first one's just gonna go to there. Very thin line. And then I'm going to hop over a few more. Same thing, straight up and down. And that light post needs to end at the same height as the one previously. Okay, that's going to help with that perspective as well. Can you see those lines okay? The first one, not so much. Yeah, let me go back over that again. How about that? Yeah. Better valid. Okay. Good. So now let's add um, a few more light posts. We have one, two, three. There's five in the example, but however many you feel like is going to fit well. And again, stop the lamp post at the same height okay. as the other ones. All right, so now once we have all those lines in, we're going to come back in between and make our trees. So remember the Y shape we did over here? Same thing. So I'm going to go to our black border line down at the diagonal. I'm going to come up. I'm going to make a Y, and I want to be taller than my light post. And again, super loose with our trees. 
My orange is still a little bit wet, so it's kind of pulling the color in the butt, but that's okay. And then we're going to add those trees in in between all of the light posts. So remember, no two trees look the same, so feel free to make them as branchy or as not branchy as you want. And as you get towards the upper corner here where your big tree is, the trees are going to get a little bit thinner and smaller. So they start out really tall and big and then they get a little bit smaller and thinner. And then while you have that small flat brush and your black paint, you can add some line accents to your big tree. Some wiggles, create a little bit of a bark texture or an outline. This might be a little difficult to see because my, my brown Purple brown is pretty dark. How are the lamp posts and trees coming? They're they're okay. Okay. And then the next thing is our light, our lamps, our light post lamps. And we're going to use a very pastel yellow. So I've got a fresh plate of yellow and white here. And I'm going to wash my small flat brush so we can have a nice clean lamp light. The middle trees. Do y'all need a few minutes, or how are you doing? Yeah, yeah, I need a couple minutes to finish this tree here. Okay, sounds good. I'm going to go mute, and you just holler when you're ready. Yeah, yeah while we're doing this. Finish. All right. Yeah, I guess. So we've got a clean, small, flat brush, and we've got some fresh white and yellow paint. We're going to be very pastel yellow, so that means more white than yellow. We're going to mix, mix on our plate and our lamp post shapes are kind of like circle ovals nothing too crazy um so on our lamp post sides we're going to do a lamp on the top right and left of our post so we're going to not think too hard about this and we're going to make a circle and a circle wow okay Mix up a little bit more paint if you need it, and then move right along. Circle, circle. Many. And then as you get down the line, they're going to get smaller and a little bit more distant. And the one that helps with perspective is we're going to add one that's coming from this um off the canvas here on the right on the edge that's going to help 
that um, continuation of the path look and feel. And then if you have a smaller detail brush, we're gonna grab that and create a small X on top of our lamp. So it's gonna be a curved bottom like a smiley face and a straight line down to kind of create the cage, if you will, that the lamp post would probably be in. And I'm using black for that definition. And again, not thinking too hard about it. They're pretty abstract. A little smiley face and then a downline. Like so. Yeah. And then the last thing we have to do is just add a little bit of highlight on our tree, but you just let me know when you are are there. I'm just going to let the um, paint dry a little bit before I put the X's on. Okay. Maybe let's hop over to the tree and then we can come back to the lamps. So just like we did the dark accents on the tree, we're going to add some white as well. You can feel free to use that pastel yellow that you mixed up not too long ago, or you can just use fresh white. And you're going to come up in the tree and create a little bit of dimension in the tree in the foreground. And this one has a little bit of um, twinkle lights happening in the sky, so feel free to dab some twinkles in if you are feeling it. Oh yeah. Gotta have the twinkle lights. Oh well, yeah, there it is in a nutshell. Nice. Very nice. Oh, thank you. I can't wait to see y'all. Laura got a little sofa. Neat. I don't know. I don't know. I guess green is me. So what color? Oh, yeah. You put the highlights on the tree. That's... Yeah, you can use that pastel yellow, or you can just do fresh white, whatever is more accessible. Don't like that. Oh, let's get that off. Okay, so getting there, I didn't, um, oops, <laughs> I didn't put the um, X's on yet. No worries. I think that's perfectly fine. You can wait for it to dry if that makes you feel better. Um, and you can also take a look at your reflection if you want to add any more highlights or blue strokes in there. Now's a good time to do that while the lamps are, are drying a bit. And then as well as adding those accents here on your tree in the foreground. Okay. All right. Yeah. Hillary, can I see? Um, yeah, she had to go. She yet, had to go back again, because it's... she put her trees at a diagonal, so she's um, starting from this point again. Okay, <laughs> but that's okay. I know I'm it's not... so hard that perspective. You want to just go on that diagonal with yeah, it, but straight up and down. She <laughs> just did it all diagonal. <laughs> but no, that's okay. Worry. We just took it to the sink and scrubbed it off. <laughs> Why not? I mean, that's the best thing. You let it dry and you can paint over it as well. Yeah. Okay, so I am going to put the X's on. Okay. 
So it's a smiley face and then a line down the middle. Smiley face and line down the middle. It's like yeah, a plus not line. like a, it's, it's kind of an arc. Oh, oh, okay. Because okay. that will help make the rounded illusion yes. come through a little okay. bit more than a straight plus sign. Um, so definitely a little bit of a swoop and then a line through the middle. Make it look like it's math. <laughs> Paint is still pretty wet here. And that's okay. It might take a little bit of time to dry, but you guys have all of the, the steps needed. Um, mine was a little bit wet as well, so you're not alone in the wet paint boat. Okay. There. Oh yeah. That did it. Okay, good. That. And now I just need to put my highlights on the tree and I think I'm there. Yes, ma'am. And then I wanna add more blue to the bottom and mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and you can totally walk away from it and come back, and that's something you can easily add in later. Um, I do like to get a further view of my painting. It's You kind of miss some details or how it really looks when you're nose deep in your painting. So I think you're yoki and come back and take a look at it and figure Ooh, out I what you want to add. add. I like to hang them up and then um, look at them for a few days and keep <laughs> working on them. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Well, that was so fun. Do you guys have any questions? Um, no, I don't think Not so. Sure. Are you um, on Venmo? Do you do you? Yes, I do. Let me actually write that out for you, so um, you can read it. And I'll let me. I'll be right back. Looking good. Right. On. No, no, it's oh, um, let, me, let me get a pen. Let me Where's the pen? At. Oh my gosh. Is that an N or an L? Is that an N or an R? Is that L O N I? Lani? Lamp. Hmm. Uh, at. Okay. I just I just got Venmo, so I'm not an expert. L O N I L A M P E. Oh, and that. Right? Yeah, we got that right. Yeah, got it. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Oh, you're on mute. Can you hear me? We can't hear you. Sorry. Sorry about <laughs> that. Yeah. Ah. My bad. <laughs> L-O-N-I okay. hyphen. Okay. L -M -P -E. mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. Sorry about that. <laughs> 
I was like, what hmm. happened? She doesn't answer us anymore. <laughs> this is what they do. The zip on the lips. Okay, then, good. Yeah. Well, I will yeah. finish up and we'll get her all squared away and good. we're good. Well, I appreciate you guys. So you had a good time. Nice to meet you. We had a good time. Yeah. Thank you. Good to meet you. That's You're great. Welcome. Enjoy your evening, guys. Bye, Hillary. Bye. Have a good one. <laughs>